Okay, here we are at episode two of uh, putting in an LS4 in a late model Corvair. And um, so since the last time, I got the 4T80 and the 4 LS4 mounted together. Um, there's a whole separate video on how I drilled and put this fifth bolt in there, uh, which is something you have to do if you make these, make these uh, up. And uh, while I had the motor out, <clears throat> I did a ring gap on it. You probably didn't have to, but I went ahead and did it. I found that the top ring was, uh, <clears throat> was they were all about 20, 20 thousandths. And the second ring was, uh, I think, 26 thousandths. So I made first and second rings at 28 thousandths. And then I think it was a good idea because I went in there and there was a lot of a lot of uh, crud and carbon behind the uh, rings, especially the oil ring. And uh, so it's nice to you know de decarbon all that stuff. And plus the valves, I did a valve job on it. Um, the exhaust valves, the seats were just hammered, you know, just pitted and hammered, and so just uh, did a light cut on. The, all the seats and the valves, so they all seal nice. And uh, replaced the head studs with ARB bolts, not studs, just the bolts. Um, put a cam in it from, it's Brian Furches at LS4 King, and uh, yeah, I think it's a 214 intake, 222 exhaust on 112 plus four, and 604 lift, which, isn't a huge cam by any means, but uh, I think that's good for a 325 inch motor uh, to use a smaller cam to start. And um, I'm not going for peak numbers. I just kind of want more um, acceleration and uh, response. So we'll see how that combination works. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, how the motor looks. I'm going to fit it in. It doesn't. It just didn't have the intake on it and exhaust and stuff and. So it'll make putting it in the car a little bit easier. Um, as you can see, I re removed most of the stuff now. The seats are out, the window was out. Boy, that was a job by itself and it leaves all this junk here. I gotta clean up. <laughs> it's kind of in between tar and rubber and or something, but uh, there's a whole process taking the window out and the, and the uh, stuff out. So to make this fit, um, you know, the motor is going to be somewhere coming about this far in right here. So all this got to go, of course. And as far as vertical room, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm going to just keep, you know, I can see that I've already getting ready to take that out. Uh, I'm going to just chop away at it bit by bit and go, you know, vertical uh, bit by bit as I need to. And, you know, it's a shame this whole rain gutter business that they have in there, it's just so well engineered. It's like this plate down there, it's on a curve. So there's holes down here and uh, the rain just dr drains off into those holes. And, you know, it adds a lot of structure with real thin metal. Just, I love that kind of engineering. But unfortunately, that much of that is going to have to go <clears throat> for vertical room. And uh, <clears throat> another big deal is this is the subframe which has all the integrity and it goes all the way back here because the the original uh, Corvair was mounted back here. So I had a lot of weight bearing. Uh, it's about 35 inches between here and here. And that's about how wide the motor and transmission is. So it's not really gonna fit as it is. I'm gonna have to actually get into all this part and remove it and replace it with something. Okay, so we got all this stuff cut away, just enough to get the motor in. Um, it's real tight still, but the first thing I wanted to do is get in its general, really close location within a half an inch probably. And this is where it kind of sits right now. As you can see in here, it's, it's going to need even more room. 
but uh, I just wanted to get an idea of like where its general resting place will be so that I can uh, start thinking about structure and how to uh, how to make it strong again because as you can see over there in the corner uh, I had to cut out a lot of the box tubing on the subframe to just to make uh, this this thing fit that 4T80 is a huge transmission and it, it just requires more room and over here you can see where I sliced the uh, subframe right down the middle just enough to make room right here um, <clears throat> so the, the plan is to have this all just drop out the bottom if you need to repair or do something to the motor um, I'm not really crazy about the alternator right here uh, it, it would fit I'd have to cut into here more but it's, it's way up here and I, I still got to cover all this so um, I may look into another location. Um, I was thinking I could put it right here. Except it's above the exhaust. And, you know, so that means heat shields and maybe that's, that's better. You're just kind of weighing these things out, which, which one's better. Um, but anyway, small detail. Uh, probably what I'll be doing is is starting with a roll bar and start start making some structure that I can tie things into because this is <clears throat> compromised at this point where I cut everything out <clears throat> and looking underneath you can see this is the tires of my Volkswagen uh, they're 275 50 15s I think I can get a bigger tire in here actually so I may 295, 305, I'm not sure. This is a 26 inch tire. Maybe I can go a 28, I'm not sure yet. But, so, how the suspension, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about the suspension. Here's the axle shaft. So, with a recessed hub, um, a micro stub hub, you know, I should get an axle that's, you know, close to a, a foot long, which is, which is good enough. Maybe 10 inches, something like that. Figuring it'll be in here. <clears throat> and the uh, the suspension I'm thinking about, because I could put A-arms, you know, in here like this, but I just, I just think it's just too tight, and I want to have the motor drop out and the suspension stays in place so I can roll the car around without the powertrain in it. So this Razor idea is it has a trailing link, that will be, you know, after I get re reinforced and all that, it'll it'll be like this. And it doesn't have to be very thick at all. And so that's the uh, trailing arm. And then like a razor, it has radius rods that locate it like this. Now it could have an upper and lower radius rod, but you completely locate this part and you could adjust it with Himes to get the camber uh, or it could have just a lower and have a strut to locate it this way. And uh, I'm not sure yet. Either way, it's either a strut or a coilover in this position. And so there has to be some, something more uh, substantial here to, to support everything. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So once again, it's, it's, I'm going to keep these pretty tight in here, the radius arms. I'm not sure where exactly, but um, yeah. So this is the general location. And uh, tying in the substructure with tubing, making the motor cradle, and all the suspension kind of goes all, it all kind of comes together. You know, the thought process is all happening at the same time. So you're kind of thinking ahead of, of what room you need for what. Um, now, if if we have these radius rods, however long they are, I don't know yet, and they're they're mounted like right here, this plate right here <clears throat> has to be real strong and tied to the car. So that's you know it's 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 coming out, going different places, and uh, that has to be real strong. Uh, they could they could they could bend in a little bit, I suppose. Um, We'll see. Uh, same with the the back bar. It it'll probably 
uh, it'll probably come out straight and it'll probably curve into the uh, micro stub hub so that I can get the longest axle possible in here. Uh, looking overhead, this just gives you a good idea of where in location this engine will sit, this transverse mid-engine setup. And it, it looks good. Like I said, there has to be a cover all over all this. Keep the heat out, but it will, there's a lot more room between the two front seats and the motor compartment, which is the big reason why I did it this way. Plus it's just really challenging. And I like really challenging projects. 